All right, you love a bit of beef and you love beef jerky in particular, but you're unsure of what cut to use or how to prepare it to do it at home. If you'd like to get hands on and do it yourself, then the best thing you can do is head to your local butcher shop and pick up a cap off topside, just like I've got here. Now these guys have already had the top cap taken off, so all you've got to do is trim up the underneath and the top. And all you're removing is that silver skin, which is realistically just a bit of collagen. So you can put that aside, freeze it for a later date and use it in some smash burgers, some sausages, whatever you want to do. But for the purposes of this, what you want to do is remove all that silver skin and any fat that's on there. Now I've lucked out, but where I'm pointing just there, there is normally a vein. Sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not. That will all be dependent on the process when they actually bone it out and trim it up in the factory. But in this case, the vein has been removed, which means I don't have to stress. If the vein is there, the best thing you can do is cut it out. It doesn't really matter how, even if you just cut a wedge out, just remove it, because obviously it's not gonna be the greatest. Whether you are doing beef jerky or even barbecue steak, you don't want that vein left in there. And like I said before, you're gonna to wanna to clean up underneath and the top. So once underneath's been cleaned, you've removed that vein if it's there, flip it up the correct way of when you're gonna slice it, remove any extra fat and silver, and then you're ready to start slicing. Just make sure you've got a large steak knife or a chef knife to start slicing. And when you do start, they're not gonna come perfectly square. So what I like to do is just take a square cut off the very front, a face cut if you would, and then I can put that aside. It can be used for dice, or if I want to use it for a steak or barbecue steak, I can do so, but it just makes it a whole lot easier to slice out the remaining of the steaks if you have taken a face cut off first. And for the thickness of what you're gonna to wanna to cut your steak or slice it out at, that's all gonna be dependent on what you're gonna use it for. If you're gonna do beef jerky, you don't wanna go overly thin as it's gonna to have to go into a dehydrator and you don't want it to shrink up to nothing. But if you do wanna do barbecue steak, you may wanna go a little bit thinner and at the same time, if this is the first time you're doing it, you're not gonna be perfect. You may cut some door stops. You may be thick at one end and thick at the other end. At the end of the day, if you're doing it yourself, just practice makes perfect. Do it more and more. More often you do it, the better you're gonna get. Now technique wise, I like to slice from left to right being a right hander. That way I can use my left hand to support that steak that I'm cutting off. As you can see, I'm slicing left to right and allowing them to fall. It makes it a whole lot easier to guide that knife through, like I said. And once you do get to the end, you'll find that there's gonna be a smaller piece. You can cut those out if you want, especially if you are doing stir fry strips or jerky, just keep slicing nonetheless. But in this case, I'm gonna show you that you can stop sort of at the end there, keep a triangle, and then that can be put aside for diced beef as well. Just to highlight how versatile a cap off top side is, you can see here I've sliced out that whole lot into steak. Now I can pull one of those steaks out and then use it as a beef schnitzel as a whole thing like that, or I can cut it in half and I've got my barbecue steak or strip it up for stir fry strips or even beef jerky. The same thing goes for these face cuts. Now I'm gonna dice these up for casserole steak, but by all means mix in that fattier trim that you took off at the start and mix it in together and then mince it. That'll get a really nice flavor, some mince with a bit of fat in there for flavor and for texture. And you don't have to use it for diced beef that way. You can use it for mince or even sausages if you want a nice lean sausage. I suppose when all said and done, all you have to do is head into your local butcher shop, pick up a cap off topside, get it home and then start processing it yourself. Whether you want diced beef, beef schnitzels, stir fry, or even the beef jerky, you'll be able to get the enjoyment of processing it yourself at home and you'll be able to save a few dollars in the long run and supporting your local butcher is always a plus.